Hey everybody, Eric here, and today we have a very special treat for you guys. Um, we're going to be watching the live action trailer for Yaira. I, I, is this a TV show, a, a movie? I have no idea what this is. Is it just promo for the comic? I don't know, but it's quite interesting, and I can't wait to break it down. I have some special guests, as you guys know, as part of the initiative. I am over on their channels. We stream together. We do all kinds of stuff together. I have Bob from Organized Chaos here. Hello, Bob. Thank you for joining hey, me. Hey, thanks Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited to check this out. <laughs> okay. You haven't seen it yet, right? No. Okay. All right. You're in for a treat. We also have uh, Dane, uh, actual fandom, uh, who was here with us as well. Hey, and I haven't so this seen this either, so I'm I'm just like, I'm freaking anxious. I'm, I'm ready to get it on. Uh, but we're going to watch the trailer here, and I have to say, for me, this is a uniquely, like, I think I'm really qualified for this. Let me explain why. This trailer, as I've done a little research, was filmed in Vancouver. So I'm very familiar with, like, Vancouver shows. Matter of fact, my main channel, I spent a decade reviewing shows that were filmed in Vancouver, mm -hmm. Probably with a lot of the same production values, a lot of the same people that worked on those worked on this trailer because uh, Vancouver is a very popular filming location um, for low budget content. So uh, just keep that hey, in Battle mind. Battlestar Galactica was filmed there a lot. So, you know. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. If you look through a lot of the shows that were filmed in Vancouver, you'll see the same like four or five uh, locations in all of them. We're going to watch this Yaira trailer. We might pause it here and there. We're going to get through as much as we can, but this is get ready for a feast for the eyes with this. And um, here we go. I want to point out, did you notice <laughs> we aren't even in the trailer yet, but uh, the flipping thing like Marvel, like literally. Yeah. Yeah. That, right? oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's amazing just, how much he wants to be the thing that he says he hates and wants know. to, you know what I mean? It's But he's he's doing it at record pace. We're, we've gone from comics to animation to live action in like, what, two and a half years? So Yeah, I mean, he's man, already but... hit his uh, 90s fucking uh, catastrophic downturn. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. So this is the, that's the Saska Sisters production company. I want to point out something. I didn't think about this when I first watched the trailer, but a lot of the criticism is that they're very like satanic because they don't, you know, they, they're very much into like horror and gore and violence or whatever. And a lot of the pushback that Eric has given is that, no, they're actually Christians or whatever. Does this symbol look Christian to I mean, it doesn't look very Christian like to it, me. What it looks like is honestly the just the uh, those types. There's Christians that like uh, are are really into the to the goth part of the whole th uh, lore, right? Like the mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. That's what it comes off to as me, you know, as to me. Like, like I, hot, I hot topic, hot topic. Yeah, stuff, exactly. Especially. I kind of expected like as like the the audio the, to go along with this to just be like mm -hmm. a bleh, you know or something, but I no. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, yeah. ask, it's gonna I didn't be know it was live action until right now, honestly. Like, until just a minute ago, I, I didn't really realize that. Yeah. That's yeah, it's crazy. live action. I mean, yeah. I'm just happy they got some stock footage because you, you need to use that stock footage in your trailers for sure. <laughs> I want you to pay attention to the voiceover in this scene and, um, yeah. and which character we're watching because there's been some speculation on the voiceover. And I'll tell you why in a second. Oh. But let's watch this here. This is going to be tough train my body to do things that people like me shouldn't be able to do but unfortunately for me fly ain't one of them okay so that's isom and if if you're mm -hmm. watching this trailer and you never read isom you have no fucking idea what this is like you don't know what's going on here is he is this the dude from the ministry <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, I mean, let's let's be fair though. They were never really talking about Isom as a character. More more that they were just. It's mostly just been about sales and you know detractors and stuff like that and warehouses and whatnot. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, here we go. It's our introduction to Yaira's uh, backstory, Ooh. I guess. Here, biologist and archaeologist, who we feel is going to be an undeniable asset here at Projectus. Won't you projectus is one of the most unpleasant words to say like projectus it just 
hearing it out loud, it just sounds bad to me. I'm not gonna lie, looking at this, I'm like, hey guys, I did the lighting for this. Can you tell? What the fuck yeah. does it mean? Like usually a, a name like that, like a uh, regenesis or something like that, there's there's like a, a, a plot meaning for yeah. the name of the company mm -hmm. to be that way, you know what I mean? Like what a projects is is it? I just think it's just a made up word by Eric. I don't I mean kind of like how he made excess, which is yeah. um it's not the same thing as <laughs> <laughs> there was I'm that video I was watching that was calling them inept, and I'm, I'm gonna start calling them inept <laughs> now. By the way, our, I can already tell you, even though I've watched a lot of shows made in Vancouver, this is giving off fan film vibes. It doesn't oh, feel yeah, no, like a like, real like a solid production. Honestly. There's plenty of Vancouver shows I know I've watched, and this yeah. is looks way worse than any of the ones. Wait I've till seen. we get to the Yaira effects and you get to see those. That's a uh, oh god. Please join me in welcoming her to our team, Dr. Sally Rodell. Girl boss. Okay, okay, so it is. Okay, yes, we're going to get to that. But I want to brace you now, if you haven't seen this before. Pay attention to this really bad accent that they gave Yaira and <laughs> how this line comes out. Because I, I mean, I... I we need to point out how she's wearing a suit, how they're taking away her femininity. I think that's important. Well, there's a reason why I guess he started drawing her differently because I think they're trying to like make her look like the actress that's playing her in this like trailer. Oh. Um, anyway, <laughs> get ready. Adopt or die. <laughs> Adopt or die. <laughs> Adopt or die. What? Yes. Let's what, listen to that what? again. Listen to that again. Adopt or die. Is it supposed to be adapt? It is, but they. But okay, this person it really sounds like adopt. Yes, because she's trying to do some sort of like I guess like European accent. Yeah, it or sounds something. like an Eastern Eastern European East German kind of thing. I don't know. And I, uh, I no offense to the actress because I don't know if she is or not, but it doesn't sound like everybody's joking because like obviously with the Saskas being like more progressive and left-leaning they're like oh so they don't want you to have kids you have to adopt kids or die that's the <laughs> yeah. like adopt or die yeah these adoption uh, agencies are getting really aggressive man yeah i yeah. actually thought maybe they're trying to say something like that because it no. really sounds like adopt <laughs> yeah which by the way that line isn't even unique to this world like it's that's a line that's been used for years like adapt or die it's it, like yeah. it adapt or die adopt or die <laughs> Ah! Secure the area until off the can ride. Solari! Yeah, that's one of them. I think that's Sylvia. So the far, Earth. this is the most entertaining thing that the Ripperverse has produced, hands down. <laughs> yes. So uh, here we go. Law of the Earth. Very few things have the ability to survive. It. Like, what is this accent? Very, like, it just like it, there's no way that's a real person's voice. Like, no. If you think of the ability to survive the test of time, though we may not be around to see them to their fullest fruition, what we struggle to create now will be the triumphant echoes from the past. This is cool, woman. Woman. Five minutes. There she is. That's her from like the because this is supposed to be the Ira thing, but this is just from Isom. This this part right here is just from the Isom comic, okay. basically. So oh yeah. That that's the gym outfit. Yeah. Yes. So this is uh, when she starts a fight with a guy, and they both are just assuming oh. wrongly who the other one is, mm -hmm. uh, and and just beating the shit out of each other for no apparent reason. We have this superpower person. People, quick, do a perimeter of like five feet. Be <laughs> because he got thrown into her in the sky. Yeah. She's flying by. Look at that. how much space there is in the sky. Somehow, <laughs> he was thrown into her as she was flying around. Oh. Five minutes. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. Thanks oh, for the heads up. What is that accent? By the way, if this were a Marvel or DC show and the woman pushed a guy aside and acted like she was a badass, th they would be this would be Brie Larson all over again, Rachel Zegler all over again. That that's literally they would astroturf this. And be like, oh, this looks like shit, and it's a girl boss. That's that's the exact way they would look at this. A thousand percent, yeah. 
Oh, so yeah. also her, what is she saying here? Like, I don't want to turn on subtitles. I want to, I want to play the game, try to figure it out. Cause I don't know exactly what she's saying. So I think she says five minutes. Thanks for the heads up. Yeah. But as in like, that's like how long it's going to take for Al- Apple core to get there. Yeah. Which is like, that's a really long time for a superhero team. I feel like Superman, yeah. they're fucking quick. Right. Five minutes. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> it's like she goes from she goes from like like uh, like Eastern European to like Scottish to Irish. I don't I don't know what this accent. Yeah, is. I was gonna say there sounds like there's five or six different things mixing in there, and and also what is that walk that she does? Like that's is that it's a girl boss walk, right? Yeah, that's that's okay. her being a. Badass, oh really? I thought like, she had a wedgie. Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> I was here. I lived. I am still here. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, I was here. I lived. I am. I was still here. So I think what, that's what is, she says. Is this speech supposed to be like the after of her encounter of Isom and Albacore? I have a funny story about like uh, a little while ago. I was at the barber shop. Uh, at the barber shop, I showed this as I was watching it to someone there, like the whole thing, and they were like what the fuck is this? Because this is not made for people that don't know any of this stuff to watch it and then want to, to buy this comic. It's purely because, made to maintain these fucking pay pigs, man. <laughs> yeah. Because, yeah. because it's, it's not advertising a show or a movie. It's just a trailer for the comic book. Um, It's not obvious that it's a trailer for a comic book and it, it doesn't tell you anything about these characters prior to this scene. Which means if you didn't read Isom, you have no fucking clue what you're watching. No. The people there, that the, the, the guys next to me were like, I don't know what the fuck this is. I was here. I lived. I am still here. That is an awful... Whoever wrote that... I Keep in mind, this is coming from the people that spend their time criticizing like Marvel and DC. Yeah, I mean, is, this is supposed to be like a press junket or something, and this is what she's. I'm. I'm. This is ridiculous. This is ripped directly from like Iron Man. You know I mean, what? It, this no, is, I was thinking it was the opening scene to X Men with uh, Jean yeah. Grey giving a speech. And, you know, I can see uh, that too. adaptation. You know, blah blah. blah. As know. as I've said before, the Ripaverse doesn't do anything unique. They just copy paste other like everybody else's work. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. All right, and then they call everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did she do? Why? That that? Why did she? Yeah, give her? we we need more of a setup. She just assaulted that woman. Oh, okay, that, let's watch. Let's watch this scene from from the start of the scene to where she punches. As we know, this woman just had some kind of powers kick in that she isn't aware of, and just like right, is, and she's like she help. didn't even do it. She what did she do? That's the thing. Yeah. What did she do? She was just sitting there and shoots into the sky, like. Let's try this one more time. And again, what the fuck is she saying? Here. I'm on you. Sweet dreams chilled. Sweet dreams chilled? Is that the person's name? Chilled is that like a character's name or something? Child, uh, is it child? May, um, I bet it is supposed to be child. By the way, that little like flying thing to jump like what was that for? Why was yeah, she even flying like, when she did that? I thought she was gonna go after the beam or something, and you yeah, know, maybe that like, was the kind of launch that you do when you're taking it and, the way the fuck off. Yeah. And she just like went like five feet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well that 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 was the scene we we saw in the the comic page preview yeah yeah that struggle is except the girl didn't have a shave side, side of her head wasn't shaved so um yeah <laughs> oh. i would like to thank mr eusebio for allowing me the opportunity to discover and create alongside my esteemed colleagues at Projectus. 
Thank you. Okay, so I'm assuming she's talking about XEPs because she's talking about adopt or die. And I think she's talking about the XEPs and stuff. <laughs> but the reality is that this takes place after the secession of Texas, where the battle happened with like Brian Solari and all these other characters. So why do you need to make a press conference about what XEPs are this far into this world's life? Because clearly people know about this. <sighs> My God, he even has, they even have the X is, is it highlighted there? Like, mm -hmm. come on, can you, can you do some stuff to make it not seem like you're just ripping off X-Men, please? Cause look, if anybody in that space watches this and think that thinks that this is going to compete with like Marvel or DC or whatever, you've lost your fucking minds. Yeah. It's you comics. Are one thing. Comics are one thing because you know, you can have a lot more sub subjectivity involved with the art and the writing and stuff. When it comes to how a film's presented or a live action thing, like it, it's going to show, and it does show, that this is a uh, is amateur hour, like yeah. all from top to bottom. And, and so, did the did the Soskas direct this? Yeah, I think in the credits they they wrote and directed it. Okay, okay. so that's what. So I was thinking that the part of this the reason this probably exists partly is because they're film directors, so they probably mm -hmm. made the deal they made with Eric was probably something along the lines of, well, you know, I don't know if they demanded it necessarily, but he maybe offered it, but essentially that's probably part of the contract is that they get to do some kind of live action thing for the Ripperverse. That's uh, probably why he's fighting so hard for them is he feels like that they are his foot in the door of like actual TV and movies and stuff like that. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Cause I don't think anybody else in the, associated with the Ripperverse has anything to do with like production stuff like this i think because the sasuke is only the one so bottom line eric july uh as an extension of blaze media which he definitely is uh rip reverse he wants cultural influence so that he can tell everybody that the culture that they're that they're into now is bullshit abandon it i've got a clip of him saying this yeah um you know he that's that's just what he wants he wants to everybody to hate the things that, that already exist and then you know uh, like this stuff or at least just hate the other stuff because he doesn't really i mean yeah he wants to make money but he also wants everybody to be so disgruntled with everything you know culturally that uh mm -hmm. that they just and then they blame it all on wokeness and they blame it all on this and then of course they're going to vote for uh the right wing wingers or whatever while he meanwhile says that he's you know oh don't vote blah blah, blah you know mm -hmm. and he's probably happy with people not voting too at least they're not voting democrat right yeah, and that's that's the Eric July fucking <laughs> grift right there. Oh, well, this trailer. Let's let's. It, there's some Sasuke influence in this that you guys are probably not prepared for, and uh, it makes me wonder what direction the comic book is going to go. So, mm -hmm. uh, an archaeologist. It's a bit archaic, isn't it? She's well studied, Jerry. Cool Make hair, man. Her credentials. <laughs> Be my guest. Completely real now. It's just an unusual area of expertise to pair with biology. Well, Dr. Rodell, from my understanding. Is it odd for archaeology and, and biology to kind of work together? I, I don't think it, to me, that doesn't sound weird because you would think that archaeologists would be interested in biology because it would help them in their field and vice versa. Bioarchaeology is a unique discipline that focuses on the study of human skeletal remains within the archaeological and mortuary context. It therefore emphasizes approaches from biological anthropology and archaeology and derives theoretical guidance from both cultural anthropology and evolutionary biology. So, there's so in other words, these scientists sitting here sh wouldn't be talking about why an archaeologist right. is working with them. It's an unusual woman. Oh, an unusual woman? Are they pointing out the fact that she's a woman? Is that... Is that what's happening here on uh in the Ripperverse? She's a, she's a unusual. She's a girl boss. <laughs> well, Doctor Rodell, from my understanding. Oh wait, is she correct him? Is this woman correcting the guy? I, I, this is an interesting scene here. Let's let's hear what they say. Dang, it's just an unusual area of expertise to pair with biology. Well, Doctor Rodell, from my understanding, is an unusual woman. Don't be threatened, Jerry. She's on our side. Oh, that's that's an attack on his masculinity because he's yeah, a man and he should never yeah. be threatened by a woman. And the yeah. fact that they pointed that out is absolutely woke to me. This is woke, so, yeah, woke garbage, guys. It's um, already woke. Identity politics at play here. I, what I'm, yeah. What's got me thinking now is is uh, the people that made this, like the the actual filmmaking crew, they probably don't know really anything about Eric July and the Ripperverse, right? Like most likely, no. I mean, if they're uh, unless they're comic book fans that are in a very niche audience, probably not. Here we go. Congratulations. 
That wig he's got on, uh, holy that's shit. That's his real hair. Why do you think that's a wig? Oh, I don't know. Those lenses yes. make her look cross out. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, typically in a, in a, a trailer, you want awkward long shots. Mm -hmm. They're the best. You took that like a chomp. Were you trying to knock me out? No. If it's meant to be a death blow. Okay, they need to learn how to edit <laughs> properly. That, that was just, what the hell? No. Not only that, did you hear? She said, it was meant to be a death blow. It sounded very like Lucky Char. Like, again, I don't know what this accent is. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Blow. <laughs> By the way, why is she trying to kill this person? Is she, I mean, I guess she's a villain. I mean, what, I haven't seen anything really from any of the fucking characters introduced in the Ripaverse to show that they're heroes. You know, I, like they I, all yeah, seem like at the very at, least, they're just like morally gray fucking anti heroes or, or just like self, in, you know, self interested characters. No, but this editing is so bad right here. Like, let's yeah. watch this again. <laughs> you took that like a chump. Oh. <laughs> Were you trying to knock me out? No. If it's meant to be a death blow. <laughs> you took you that like a, death a chump or a yeah. champ. Yeah. Is it supposed to be chump or champ? You took that like a chump. Like, I, one I think more it's, time. It must be because... champ. Context included. It must be champ, right? Yeah. You took that like a chump. Were you trying to chump. knock me out? No. If it's meant to be a death blow. It was meant to be a death blow. What the hell, man? Yeah, right. Stand down. Yeah, look, written and directed by the Sasuke sisters. So then now they're, those women are going to puke on each other, right? <laughs> uh, After they make up. See here. <laughs> Let's see. Produced by Joe Gold. So um, Joe Gold was a producer on My Name Was Peter, which is a dark, suspenseful, heart-wrenching series based on true events. The logline here is during the era of national socialism, the untrolled true story of the first pre-World War II LGBTQI plus resistant fighters in Berlin, Germany, sheds lights on those who gave us ultimate sacrifice for freedom against one of the darkest tides humanity has ever seen. I would say it's really weird to me that... That first of all, I'm not assuming anything about Joe. Maybe he doesn't care about the people he works for, but I'm mm -hmm. wondering if he understands the 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 through line to, to Eric July from this because the Sasuke sisters are that buffer. That's mm -hmm. this is what a lot of people who are Eric July fans, Ripaverse fans, have been saying about the Sasuke sisters is they have connections to like quote unquote woke people in the industry that would allow this content to be made without necessarily going through Eric July. Morgan Boot is not anywhere to be found because Morgan Boot is not an actress. Morgan Boot is a friend of the Sasuke sisters. And that's it. Holy There's nothing shit. I'm finding about her that is has anything to do with acting whatsoever. Everything I'm seeing about her is just random stuff, like pictures of her with friends, things like that. There's no information on her um, about being an actress whatsoever. Kia King, let's let me share this with the screen. So Kia King that was uh that was in the Yaira trailer um supports Black Lives Matter. I don't have a problem with that, no, obviously. No. But I would guess that some people in the Ripaverse fandom might have a problem with that. So shout out to Kia. This is pretty based, but I'm pretty sure that a lot of people in the Ripaverse probably would not feel the same way. And that's just a little bit of digging. That's a little bit of digging on people associated with the, the Sasuke sisters and the trailer for Yaira. And as of the time of uploading this video, I haven't seen a lot of people talking about this. So um, it's going to be interesting to see what else is, is dug up because I'm pretty sure there are people that are going to be dissecting this trailer every frame uh, to talk about it.